I wanted to sit down and make a video about Path of Exile and kind of doing a review of it, how I felt about it after reaching the end game finally and experiencing everything that the game has to offer and kind of how it relates or compares to Diablo 4. And I'm, I'm kind of lost as to how to set it up. So you know what? We're just going to talk about Path of Exile and why it's just a badass game. How about that? So uh, the first thing that will start this off for me is there's seven different classes that you can play. Uh, there you see them right there. You got Witch, you got Duelist, you got uh, uh, Bogal, you got Sion, Barbarian-like guy, Templar, and some other gal here, like an Assassin-type class. Uh, that's already a plus. There's two extra classes. Uh, I played a little bit before the season started and then I started I actually started with a scion old Heine right here and uh I just realized real quick that uh that wasn't gonna work so uh we went Linda a couple of base things about the game everybody touches on you know you go ahead and gotta go ahead and have to get these out of the way uh the graphics game's 10 years old graphics are great to me the gameplay is great the mechanics are good uh, the sound, the sound effects, all of that is phenom. Uh, if you have headphones on and, and are immersed in the game, you can hear like things off in the distance. You can hear screams and whispers and just things that complete the dungeon. Uh, the music is absolutely epic. So it's like, reminds me of Diablo 2 music, where everybody knows the Tristram music if you play Diablo 2. The, Da, na, 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 na. Well, it's the same thing with this. You, you know, you know the dun, 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 I played the game for two weeks and I kind of know the song already. Um, it makes me play like air loop. You know, I mean, there's just multiple songs. I wish I could have it on a soundtrack, to be honest with you. Like, it's, I like the music. It's epic, intense, all fun, all of that. So. You know, a lot of the guys are like, Hog, you made me turn the damn music back on. I forgot how epic it was. It really is really that good. Um, other things like the UI is real nice, as you see behind me. Ten skills, that's real nice. Um, you know, five here, five here, plus three, so 13. Uh, really is truly an ability to play your own way. Your skills are used with gems. So in Diablo 4, we actually had a, you know, your, your tree... And let's say Pulverized had, you know, basically one modifier. You had two modifiers on there, but one was a force modifier, right? So you had Pulverized and you had Overpower and then something else. Doesn't forgot about all that. Well, here you pick what you want. So like, for example, I got Holy Flame Totem and I got multiple totems behind that. So now I cast more than one totem. And then those totems also stun. And they also add cruelty and they've got increased critical strike and increase critical damage. Just a small taste of what you can do. Something else that was real cool to me was cast when damage taken. You have like triggers. So if you don't feel like worrying about casting something, so for example, I got like, I don't know if even know if this, well, I know it works. Steel skin and the arcane cloak. When I take damage, doo -doo, those two things cast automatically. I don't have to worry about it. But uh, little simple things like that. If you look at it and think it's too complicated, just take, just relax, take a step back, because it really ain't that complicated. Really, something else that I liked was the ability to use a potion. That's huge to me, because in Diablo 4, like, you have to use basic skills and generators. You don't have to use that in this game. Uh, they believe in cast when you want, as long as you have the resource. And if you don't have the resource, you just use a potion. It's kick-ass. Uh, potion charges refill when you kill stuff. So there's really no cooldowns either, which is, I hate cooldowns, so this is like the best thing ever. Um, DM said it best. You know, I'm, I'm working on this video while he's released his. It really is uh, everything that we wanted Diablo 4 to be. Uh, you know, me and him had talked privately, and uh, he said the same thing to me in private. He said, you know, it kind of pissed me off because it's everything that I wanted. I said, yeah, because a big thing to me was, I remember telling my group of friends that I played with, I'd pay $20 in the shop for a hideout. Hmm. Well, guess what? We 
got a hideout for free. Here's my hideout. It's fully customizable. I love this right here. Click on edit. And you can mess around. Do whatever you want. A couple of things to highlight. You can actually craft <laughs> any kind of thing you want. Look at all these attributes you can put on there. You can take them off. You can reforge items, reset items. Are you remember in Diablo 4 and everyone's complaining like, what's the point of having these white items in the game? Well, in uh, Path to Exile, we got this white item right here. And we want to make it something badass. Well, we've got these things called essences. Gloves. 60 to 69 in max life. Okay. Guess what? That makes it a rare. Puts attributes and stuff on it. Look, now we've got a three-link glove that's got armor, energy, shield, a bunch of attributes, 11 to strength, all this. Okay. So everything's got a use. Brings you to your stash, right? So we complain about the stash in Diablo 4, Path to Exile. They want you to have an organized stash. And this is where some of the in-game monetization comes in. Uh, you can go to your shop and actually buy premium uh, stash tabs. This is right here. Uh, they do have a sale on these a lot. And so you'll see gem stash tab, flash, st flask stash tab. God, I can't talk today. But that's what we got here. You have a bunch of different currencies in this game as well. But they also do other things like reforges are rare with new properties, normal item to a rare item, all kind of different things that will help you modify gear. And then uh, tab for your in-game stuff, which is maps. We'll get to that here in a minute. Essences, which again, I modified just showed y'all that. Uh, oils, cards. Y'all, there's so much to this game. It's unreal. And it's not that it's overwhelming. It's that there's a lot of content. And a lot of times people take that as being overwhelming. You don't have to do all this content at once. You just take it in little bites. That's all it's designed for. The big thing that I felt with this game was there's multiple games in one game. So once you're actually done with the campaign, you're done with that game and you start a whole nother game. So this is what I mean. When you get to the end game, you have this thing called the Atlas. The Atlas passive skill, and then you have like the actual Atlas, which is this right here. Which I hadn't messed with a lot, but these are different maps that you can... I don't even know. <laughs> to be honest with you, but there's so much. You know, there's a battle pass, obviously. Uh, there's You can actually customize what you like to see happen in a specific dungeon so think nightmare dungeon but times 8225 this is what we wanted in d4 i wanted a hideout i wanted a guild stash so i always call them clans but they call guilds over here we have a stash where the whole guild can put their stuff in and share we have a whole nother hideout which i hadn't really messed with but it's little things like that. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of these stash tabs that I've gotten for quality of life increase, you don't have to have these. You can organize stuff yourself. But I've spent less money. I've spent $50, which is less than the cost of Diablo 4 on a free game. And this is all you need to efficiently run the game, really. I mean, you can play the game without it, but to have good quality of life and all this. And just, just to point out some other things that we were missing out is you can actually do these things called affinities. So, like, if I have a gem in here and I want to assign it to this specific one, you know, I can make it gem tab, make it a certain color, and then set the affinity. So, when I have a gem over here, I just click it over, and boom. It only goes in this tab. So, gone are the days where we had to sit and complain, where we had couldn't try multiple builds or do multiple things or this or that or whatever, because we were limited to a stash space. It's all in here. And you can always buy more for a very low cost, and they're always running sales. Uh, it's just, there's always, the content is crazy. Once you get to the end game, you have these things called maps, which think of like nightmare dungeons, but there's really badass modifiers on them. You can modify these even more, veil or them, or do whatever the hell you want. There are unique ones that drop. Uh, you see here item quantity, item rarity, monster pack size. Uh, this is badass. You can run uh, just magic ones. You can run normal ones, which they recommend not to do. Uh, or you can run these uh, rare ones right here. 
so uh this this is really badass here uh people are trying to mess with me right now i'm doing this you have npcs in your hideout um but but not only do we have that we have the bestiary place which is another kind of side game inside the game where you can come in and create things so you you know as you do the campaign or mess around in the world you'll find these beasts right here and then you can use them to craft you know if i need two orbs of binding i can just spawn this thing kill it and there they are um get unique items create a unique item create a unique flask staff any of this stuff right so that's another aspect of the game i guess what i'm trying to get at is there's content galore it's not just you get bored of farming the tree of trash you can go do something else that's on a timer but it might not be there like there's none of that everything's available to you at all times you always have shit you need at all times you always have the resource you need an ability to cast skill i, I thought it was really funny when uh rod said power fa power fantasy is really the diablo thing no no it ain't this is all about power fantasy and uh, so a big thing i want to point out is the passive tree a lot of folks get overwhelmed with a passive tree uh, they say it's too much for them to handle. I think something that would really help out uh, for them to implement maybe in PoE 2 if they want to retain players or, or increase the player retention metric or whatever, uh, put some kind of fog of war around these certain nodes because people don't realize that which spawns here and another character spawns here, another character spawn like that's where you start on the board. If you have some kind of fog of war over this until a certain level, they would say, hey, don't worry about the rest of this tree because you're not going to use that or whatever the wording would be the developers know better than i would that would help the players out tremendously because i know the first time that i ever experienced this game i got off the beach got into town hit the passive tree and I uninstalled it was too overwhelming but if you take this in small bites and just almost zoom in to where you start and just start there it's not that bad once you get to about level 20 you're 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 home free the way i say it if you just take your time and read everything that's another really nice thing about this game they tell you everything and then you can hit alt for more info but everything's explained like herald of ash okay grants above providing fire damage based on your physical damage like everything is spelled out for you you don't have to ask you don't have to wonder it's all there for you really wanted to uh kind of res reserve my opinions for after i would experienced just about everything in the game well they have little things like the mine here's another end game activity that you can do we have heists that you can do it's just a never ending you can just do content forever until the next game comes out the cool thing speaking of the next game the really cool thing is to show they're not predatory in their practices of microtransactions or whatever because there is no pay for power pay to win or whatever it's just pay for convenience pay to look cool they're going to let everything that you've paid for in this game transfer over to path of exile 2 so that's another positive for grinding gear games I'm, i've been really impressed uh with the lack of predatory feel of this game it just feels like they want us to go have fun um so dm said it best i 100 agree with him when he said uh this is everything that Diablo should have been. This is everything we wanted it to be. Uh, they, I, they've they never told us to manage expectations. And I, if you really want to go even farther, if you really you know do your own um, investigating or whatever and start comparing patch notes, uh, the patch notes on this game are pages and pages and pages and pages and pages and pages long. And Diablo is like two or three pages. So... They talk about 13 page patch notes like that's a big deal well that's like an average poe patch sometimes a hot fix so anyway it's really cool uh, the only negative that i have and i do have one negative out of the whole thing and it's the mapping system so it's it's it ties in with the uh uh with the quests here but it's just very misleading and a lot of the new players uh you know are just kind of kind of iffy about it but so example like let's say it says go to the ship graveyard you can actually go to the ship graveyard and it says 
well, if you look at this map, I would assume it's northwest from where you come in at the waypoint. It might not necessarily be northwest. It might be northeast. And another issue that we had, a big one was the ruin square was really impossible to get around. Um, and then the bathhouse, wherever that was, that one drove me absolutely insane. I forget where that one was. Uh, right here, this one drove me insane too. But some of the problem is that if it says go to the Solaris Temple and you have an area like right here that has multiple areas you could go, sometimes, like here, the tunnel, behind the tunnel is the quarry. Well, it doesn't say go to the quarry. It'll say, uh, let me not mix my words up. It'll say go to the quarry, but you won't know that you got to go to the tunnel first. There we go. So you'll be looking around for the quarry, not knowing, oh, I got to go to the tunnel. And then when you go to the tunnel, then you'll find the quarry. So I guess what I'm trying to say is it's a little confusing trying to find your way around. And I know a lot of the veteran players had said, you know, it's, you'll figure your way out. You'll do it. You shouldn't have to figure out a map. You know, I don't, I don't know. But to counter that, the mini map system is really cool. So you have your overlay and you have a mini map system. So where the uh, Diablo developer said no overlay because it'll take away from the beautifulness of the world. Well, this one lets you have an overlay, but guess what? There's all kind of options. This game's all about options, 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 options. So if we scoot over, do a little live scooting, you'll see all the options here. You actually have a loot filter. That was really nice. Uh, you can disable the tutorials. Uh, you can change the cursor size and uh, color, which is really nice. No more having to use yellow mouse. And um, map transparency and size. So you can actually make your mini map really big. Take up the whole screen, be full. You can take away the landscape, make it outline. You can do a little mixture of both. And you can have the map really tiny. So options, options, options. They want the player to be happy. You can change your key binds, notifications, all of this stuff, everything you need. It's everything that I wanted. DM was right. I agree 100%, but it's everything I wanted in Diablo 4, and it's right here for free. And uh, I think that's why we've seen y'all. I mean, God honest truth, here lately on Twitch, sleeping and chess has gotten more views than Diablo 4 almost combined pretty sad uh path to exile has a lot of viewers right now it's a brand new season uh highly recommend go check it out it's a badass uh game i love it i could see myself playing it for a long time now there are times where you get frustrated with it just take your time don't let things overwhelm you reach out to somebody in the community if you need help so that's another nice thing about the path to exile community is everyone's been real welcoming everyone's been real nice helps out shares information uh, really hadn't run upon any uh, any negativity so far. So uh, take that for what it is. But anyway, appreciate y'all for watching. Hit like and subscribe for more content. Make sure to follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash hog underscore gaming. Make sure to join the Discord. Link's in the description below. We'll see y'all next time.